everybody, and welcome to Tech Zulu Live from South by Southwest Interactive. I'm your host, Amanda Kulong, and I am proud to say that the folks here in Austin, Texas, have survived the deluge of rain that came <laughs> pouring out of the sky last night. We were sitting here talking. This is this is Sean and Christina from Startup Institute, Boston, soon to be New York, and. We were talking about how everyone got caught out in the rain. Thunder and lightning and wind. And it didn't matter if you had a poncho. It didn't matter if you had an umbrella. You were soaked head to toe. Right? Weren't you on 6th Street? Oh, my God. I was on 6th running home. It, it was coming in sideways. Yeah. It was yeah, it really was. It was New York weather. What, what, <laughs> what do you think? I mean, come on, Boston. Like, what did you think of the, of the rain last night? So straight from 6th Street, we took a pedicab, got stuck. Uh, right at the bridge because he wouldn't go any further <laughs> and walked home so the pedicab <laughs> wouldn't go any further yeah I, I thought that they were troopers but I mean sideways rain can you beat it <laughs> I mean we, we did a vine you know after the fact I mean we literally went from the Hilton Garden Inn where we are right now over to the other Hilton which is a block away if that we were drenched we looked like drowned rats as they like to say back home or maybe in New York City yeah but yeah, so I mean, it's just sort of like the vibe of South By. I like to t sort of talk about some of these stories because there are certain things that are unique to the South By Southwest experience. This time, torrential downpour apparently makes that list. And I had an experience too where we were, my friend and I needed to go pick up this massive step and repeat banner yesterday, last night. And it was when the rain was first starting. And this banner, like, it was huge in terms of length that it wouldn't fit in a regular cab. So we hailed one of the pedicabs no. like can you take us with this <laughs> massive tube and and the guy was like yeah it's an adventure and so he had on his poncho we stuck the tube out of the back of the pedicab and like true geeks at South by Interactive, we're taking video, we're doing pictures, we're posting all sorts of craziness of us with this pedicab driver and the thing sticking out the back. And we finally got back here, we posted it everywhere. And Did it have its own Twitter account by the end of the adventure? No, it really should have. And, and yeah, we failed on that part. <laughs> but you know, we had Vine later and you know, started using all that stuff too. But anyway, start startups. Startups in general, things that things related to startups and the craziness we all do. Mm -hmm. Startup Institute. What exactly are you guys up to? I know that you're opening up a New York office. You are in the Boston office. What, mm -hmm. What's it like there? What's the vibe there in Boston? So the vibe in Boston is strong. Uh, there's tons of companies that are growing and looking to hire. There's companies like Boundless and Yesware and Objective Logistics. But really as much as they're doing uh, to continue to grow product, growing their teams is really hard, and that's where we come in. And Christina, what, what do you like about Startup Institute? Explain a little bit more about the organization overall. Sure, I mean, it, it came out of a, a recognition that you need more than founders and engineers to scale a company. Really? I know, Is, amazing, right? You need more than that? I didn't know. Well, these really successful companies were coming out of Techstars Boston, and they had like the founder and a you know, couple of business people, a couple of engineers, and they got a little bit of money, and then they're like, we need to hire people. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who are interested in startups yeah. and have experience in marketing or sales or you know, product and design. Legal. Legal, but in big companies. Yeah. And it's really you know, kind of dangerous to take them and plop them in a startup it, it, you don't know if it's going to work. The culture is so important when you're a team of that size. Yeah. The being able to hit the ground running on day one is so important. You don't have time to onboard someone. Right. And so all these companies <laughs> needed talent, and all this talent wanted to work at startups, and yet they weren't finding each other. So Startup Institute came out of this realization that you know, there, there could easily be a program that says, you know marketing, you know development, you know design. Here's how it works in startups. Here's what agile development looks like. Here's what A-B testing means for a marketer. We're going to teach you the context, and then we're going to help you find these roles. So we have hiring partners, and we have practitioners that come in and teach, what do I do in my day job? within this category and and so these students are actually learning what it's like to be on the ground and we're giving them that on ramp into the community as well she was really good at that pitch wasn't she sean do you think that she's going to do well in new york office? yeah she rocked it i mean <laughs> we brought christina on it couldn't have been a better a better addition to our team i mean if her background just being in new york building a company she knows everybody <laughs> and, 
<laughs> yeah, and it, it's just going to come full force. I, I think like what she cares about in terms of building something mm -hmm. meaningful for New York's tech community, uh, it shows from her heart and what we mean to do in Startup Institute, and I'm pumped. <laughs> Are you as pumped as when the Red Sox win back in Boston? Uh, so that, that's kind of where my loyalties start to break off. So Oh, don't you. Oh, oh, don't you. Oh, no, no. I'm Maine, and it probably hurts. But and I went to school in Boston, don't you. Okay. Do you want me to kick you off the stage? I'm, I'm I will Jersey kick guy. you off this stage. You don't want to see me get violent. I've got no ounce of New England. Christina, so. Christina, I think that someone just lost the microphone. So here, here's the thing about me in sports, too. I'm a terrible sports rep. So I went to grad school in Boston, yeah. but I live in New York. And I have both. This is not going to end well. <laughs> I have a Yankees hat and a Red Sox jersey. And I will wear whichever one is the game I'm going to that is night. It, isn't that both. something like, isn't that schizophrenia? Well, so I wore both as a Halloween costume one year, and I nearly got my ass kicked. So. I can see why. Never again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the loyalties, the loyalties. Now, what I, what I find fascinating about this particularly is I've had a number of people on the stage with us here at South By that are doing different things to try and connect people in better ways for the startup community specifically. So can you, Sean, can you tell me a little bit about how did Startup Institute begin in the first place? Like what was, what was that seed for it? Yeah, so I think going back to like the, the Yankees or Red Sox thing, <laughs> even with those animosities, right? Like there's still like a bigger picture to it. So when you think about just building up the, the ecosystem as a whole, that's kind of where we stand from. So our experience being at Techstars Boston, still, you know, understanding the uniquenesses of that community, it really is about the entrepreneur. It's really about the innovation that we can bring to our nation. It's about creating jobs in the biggest growing sector. And there's tons of folks that want that opportunity and to be able to connect them and bring them no matter where they are. Um, so some of our close to 200 alumni come from all across, right? So Massachusetts, born and raised Bostonians, but also outside of the state and the country, Nigeria, London, Costa Rica, Rome, they all want to be a part of what we're building in America, regardless of where their startup institute's housed. Christina, what have you learned so far in terms of what people say when they first encounter Startup Institute? So it's like, oh my God, I didn't realize. I mean, basically their, their response is, why hasn't this existed yet? <laughs> like, this seems so obvious. Why hasn't this existed yeah. yet? And their second question is, why did you start in Boston? New York is clearly the place that you should be. Here we go again. <laughs> Just come to California, that's all I have to say about that. No, I mean, I think, you know, the, the need for this talent is, has been an obvious thing. Like, the pain point for the entrepreneur is the one that so many people, I mean, I ran a company, I was a CEO, hiring is so difficult. But also, on the other side of all these people that are saying the innovation economy is where the growth is going to be. Um, it's the only place that, like, I can actually see, you know, a, a true trajectory toward my career in the next 20 and 30 and 40 years, and this is the place that I'm not going to get outsourced from. Um, so people really want to be part of it. And, and you're seeing this. We're getting emails daily from people in Detroit and people in Atlanta and, and you know people in Kuwait that are like, when can you bring this to us? Because we see that this is the future and we want to, to play a part of it. And, and this is a great opportunity for that workforce training, that it's yeah. not for the founder. It's not for the entrepreneur. There are programs for that already. Right. This is for the people who know that they have something to add and want to be part of this, um, but need a little bit of that guidance that yeah. hand-holding through yeah. the process. I just find, like, I, I see so many different pieces of this coming together, too. You've got co-working spaces, you've got accelerators, but and you've got different people that focus on recruitment specifically for tech and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, but not that piece that guides the folks that want to get into it. Yeah. So, Sean, how long have you been involved with Startup Institute? Uh, so we built the company uh, almost a year ago, so we've been moving really fast in a few months. Yeah. Wow, you're not kidding. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Wow. And where in Boston, by the way, for any of any of our viewers who want to stop by? Yeah, so we're duly located. The school's actually in South Station. Uh, yeah, in Atlantic Wharf building. Lead Platinum building. It's amazing. Definitely eco-friendly. And, uh, you know, we still base our, a lot of the stuff we do out of Techstars Boston in Cambridge. Do you ever go to South Street Diner? I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's usually like a, so South Street, it's really good for like the drunken, greasy spoon, but sometimes... Now you get, know why I was there when I was in college. I get the same <laughs> symptoms when it's like a really late night in the office. It's almost like a hangover. 
C. So if you go to Startup Institute in Boston, you can also go to South Street Diner. <laughs> and Christina, do, do you know where the office will be located in New York yet? We are working on that. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, there, there are lots of really great companies that have extra space where they're expanding yeah. right now and they're looking for, you know, 60 really cool, interesting, energetic people to come and, and be part of their community <laughs> for a while. Um, so we're, we're looking at some spaces. I think, you know, there's... The New York community is just so supportive, and they're yeah. so excited for this. And there's, you know, a really obvious sort of part of the island, you know, sort of the Union Square, Soho up to Flatiron and, right. and over to the Garment District. Um, so no matter where we are, it's going to be awesome. It's going to um, be epic. It'll just be epic. TBD on that one. Right. Well, anything else we want to add about South by Startup Institute or otherwise? Man, so I think South by is amazing because everybody comes from everywhere to just converge, right? Like 400,000 people here, and it, it's just good to build that sense of community. You don't have to spend the money for the flight yeah. to feel like you've got access to the entire ecosystem. Yeah. And that, I think, is like a big similarity when it comes to Startup Institute. You know, we'd love to be in all the communities where there's a need for us to grow and expand. Right now, New York is definitely number one in terms of... L.A. <clears throat> L.A. LA. Well, LA actually, no, I can't hate. I mean, from Mucker to Launchpad to Amplify, there's good things happening in LA, and there's definitely opportunity there too. So, General Assembly from New York has come out to LA. Is that right? Are you not paying attention? I don't really pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> We're heads down. We're building. <laughs> No, but uh, to, to be fair, um, anyone out there, if there is a need to have something like this in your community, to build something and provide those opportunities, you know, email us, reach out to Christina or myself, and we'd love to be a part of the next thing. Well, thank you so much. So if anyone wants to also just follow Startup Institute, I think you can see it on the screen here, but it's Startup Inst, like yes. instant Startup Inst. <laughs> Right? Yes. yes. And uh, the New York class starts June 10th. So if you want to be part of that, you can go to startupinstitute.com and apply. Um, the Boston class just started, but they'll also have a summer program as well. So come check this out. I've got my eye on Detroit for one of the cities that we want to go to. So if you're psyched about Michigan and Detroit startups, hit me up. <laughs> awesome. And then if you just love startups in general, go to techzulu.com and follow the hashtag TZTL for Tech Zulu Trend Lounge here at South by Southwest. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.